Hi, I'm Kim Santini, and I'm here with Forsythia, which in the springtime in the Midwest is a signal, when, when the Forsythia blooms, it's a signal that winter is over and it's a time to celebrate. So today I am bringing you a journaling lesson that celebrates the bounty of this lovely little flower and her brightest little face. We're gonna do some printmaking based on her four petal design and create some really beautiful spreads in our journals. So grab your materials and come on inside and let's journal together. All right then, let's talk about what materials you're gonna need for this lesson. So first off, you're going to need some sort of inspiration that represents spring or whatever concept you are reaching for in this particular lesson. I happen to have two branches of Forsythia here in the studio with me. And these are a little bit past their prime, but that's actually when I really love them. I find them to be the most interesting when they're not perfect and uh, they show a little bit of weathering or age. I also really love this branch because it is atypical and that the flowers are not at the very end of the branch, but they're, they're at the bottom of it. And we have this beautiful little leaf that's growing here. So um, I often also like to choose unexpected or uh, unperfect s specimens for drawing from. They just feel more, more real to me. So I have my uh, bits of forsythia here. You're going to want a drawing pencil and you don't need it to be super sharp. Actually, you're gonna have more success if it's a little dull or thicker. So I have this ebony pencil here have a paintbrush. I have uh, a couple of colors of paint off, you know, over here off to the side. This is water-based paint and it's fluid acrylic, so it's nice and loose. If you if your paint's a little bit thicker, you can always add water to it as well. I have a, a brayer here. This is a um, just like a little rolling pin with a handle, and I'm going to use this for applying pressure between my printing plate and the paper. Don't worry, if you don't have a brayer, you can use the back of a spoon, the bottom of a solid glass, or something else of that nature. And then the other thing that you're going to want is some styrofoam. And you can get these sheets from food packaging or any other sort of packaging that you can find that is made out of styrofoam. This sheet is pretty thin if you use the packaging from the grocery store, it's going to be a bit thicker. Uh, just make certain that whatever you use is clean. There's nothing wrong with cleaning it off with soap and water ahead of time. You don't want there to be any grease on this because grease will prevent the paint from um, properly spreading on the printing plate. This is what our printing plate is going to be. Oh, and I have paper plates for mixing color. Off camera, I have water for cleaning my brush as well as some baby wipes for cleaning my hands. So I want to show you what a printing plate is going to look like when it's completed. So this is just another piece of styrofoam. You can see that my drawing has been embedded in the paint. That's what these heavier lines are. And this particular plate actually created these two prints right here on the page. So you'll notice that your drawing goes down inverted, right? So if you're going to add any text to your plate, you want it to be backwards on the plate so that it is legible or reads properly on the page. Uh, and you also wanna keep in mind that where your lines are on the plate is where your substrate or your original surface is going to be revealed in the actual print. So everything is inverted, positive and negative space, as well as the actual design of the image. Now I wanna talk about how we go about creating that line drawing to begin with. And uh, you know, lots of people approach this sort of line drawing and they feel like it, it's really intimidating, but it isn't, and I'm gonna simplify it for you. So. If you think about your uh, line as though it is an eyeball, 
that, or an ant, I'm sorry, if, is your line, if an ant were to crawl across the edge of this particular little stem and it crawled on the very edge of the form as we see it. So we're not thinking about dimensionally, we're just thinking about the actual silhouette of the form itself. If the ant traveled around that edge, that is what our contour line would be. And so I'm gonna demonstrate for you here on this scrap piece of paper. I like to start my eye at a singular point and slowly allow it to travel up, up the page. And here, how about if I just do this adjacently? I slowly allow it to travel up the object and as it travels, I draw exactly what those little ant feet are touching. And I like to go really slow because going slowly gives me the opportunity to find all the little sort of nuancey kind of ways that edge might shift or lean in some capacity. And I'm really looking just at the part of the line that I'm drawing as my eye is traveling across that edge itself in the object that is my inspiration. So I'm not ever really going back and assessing or comparing what I've drawn, comparing what I see overall to what I've drawn. I'm only looking at that tiny little section that I'm actively drawing And you'll notice that, you know, my drawing is close, but it's not exactly what I actually saw. However, here's the thing. It is close enough that it's identifiable. There are no art police that are gonna come around and look at the pages in my journal or look at my printing plates and say, you didn't draw that flower exactly as it was. Your stem here is too short. You know, your stem is maybe too thick. This does whatever, it doesn't matter. What you draw does not have to represent identically what you see. It only has to represent what you feel when you look at it. And this to me is a perfect representation of the delicacy, the tenderness of spring growth, the explosion of yellow. I look at this shape and to me, it speaks of forsythia. And honestly, that is all that matters, okay? So you're gonna take this approach and you're gonna apply it to your printing plate. Let me show you how to do that next. All right, so I have my printing plate right here. It has no scratches in its surface and that's important because any scratch or indentation is going to create a line mark in your actual print. So if you have some of this uh, styrofoam that's pretty scuffed up, you might want to uh, either flip it over and use the clean side or find another piece. And I am going to just do a contour drawing. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to work this out. I'm gonna do a contour drawing on this plate. Now you can cut your printing plate up into different shapes or sizes. This page here includes a printing plate that's, this is roughly four by five, I think, as well as I cut a plate in half. So I made two skinnier ones. And then I also cut some things into smaller squares and worked with those. So uh, feel free to be creative in how you shape your plate. And I am just going to begin to draw. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna begin like I did with the other one at the base of my flower, but I don't want my flower to be straight in the middle. So I'm gonna start over here a little bit. And I'm pressing into the plate with my pencil. You may find that there's a bit more of resistance. It's sort of a different surface. It's gummier because you're, indenting or carving your line versus 
the pencil just skimming over or creating a really smooth line when you're drawing on a piece of paper. I'm drawing this middle branch in case you want to follow along visually. I can see that I'm running out of space here, so I'm just gonna sort of free, improv is a better word. I'm gonna improv with this. because I didn't want that flower to go off the edge, that top one. I feel like that central space is important, so I'm going to go back in and highlight that. I love these little buds on the branch, even though there's no green on them yet, to me, they speak to the way a tree starts to awaken and how we see nubbins on the branches before we actually see the uh, green itself start to emerge. I'm gonna put some of these little branch shoots here as well. And because I love this leaf shape so much, I'm gonna put that over here too. So again, you know, you can take total artistic license in choosing or resequencing what it is that you see in your sample of spring or whatnot. Feel free to, to take artistic license in that. All right. So now I've got my, my plate drawn. And what I wanna do is I wanna go in and I wanna thicken my lines. So I'm just gonna, I put my representational object aside and I'm just gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna randomly go in and thicken things. So wherever I press down on this plate, wherever I create an indentation is where the paper, the substrate, that I'm gonna print on, it's gonna show through. All right, so some of the lines I want to feel a little thicker than others. Some sp shapes I want to feel maybe solid. Okay, so feel, you know, take artistic license and you can play with this. Uh, the other thing that you may wanna do is make a test print before you actually try to put a print in your book. And uh, a test print is just simply inking the plate up and making a print on a loose piece of paper to check and see if you like your lines before you commit it into your book. I'm not gonna do that today because I rather like the spontaneity that happens uh, when I'm just working directly on a page or working directly. Uh, I really like having the whole story of the um, plate or the print itself told on my page. So in order to ink, you're gonna want a paper plate. Well, actually, before we get to that point, let's talk about figuring out where you wanna put it in your book. So you'll notice that my demo page here was done on brown craft paper, which is bound into this book. And I also have regular white pages. I have some fabric pages, I actually think and I have other pages with marks on them already. So you can always put your prints over top of other areas or other marks. I could do some prints on here. I could do some prints on this. Um, it's totally up to you. So you do not always have to start on a clean page. And I wanna point that out because that's part of the evolution of these pages that we're creating or this book that we're making is that we're constantly adding to it, <clears throat> excuse me, in different ways and Pages are developing in non-linear ways as well because you'll notice that there's lots of blank pages. Well, actually, I thought there were. Yeah, there are some blank pages between the beginning of the book and where I'm actually working. So don't feel like you also have to start from the beginning of the book and work your way forward, okay? So inking, and I'm going to bring this back here. Um, inking our plates up is an interesting process in that 
what you want to do is you want to put ink on the surface of the, uh, the undrawn on surface of the plate and you do not want to drive it down into these crevices. So you want to use a really gentle pressure when you're putting your ink on and you want to put it on pretty evenly because what's also going to happen is your brush marks or the directional work, brush work that you use to ink your plate up is also going to end up being revealed. I just went and grabbed a, a larger brush off camera. I, I think that's gonna give me better success when it comes to inking my plate up. I think I want a little bit more yellow than that. Okay. And I'm just gonna coat my brush lightly. I'm using it from the side. See how it's sort of parallel, almost, you know, I'm not digging the paint into it. I'm using it on the side, I'm gently smoothing it. And now I am going to just gently brush my paint over. And I'm returning to my palette here. I'm extending the paint to the whole edge of the page here, all right? That doesn't mean I'm gonna get some on my fingers, so Take precaution if you happen to be using colors that are toxic, you wanna to have gloves on or a barrier cream. All right, and because we're working with acrylics, we wanna work pretty quickly. So I need to figure out where I'm gonna put my plate. I probably should have suggested that ahead of time. I'm gonna start in this lower corner of the page and I'm gonna lay my plate down. I'm gonna align it so that I have a little bit of white space at the top and the bottom of it. And now I'm going to burnish or press the plate into the paper. And I'm gonna do that with this brayer. And I'm just applying even pressure across the entirety of the plate. You don't wanna just rub in the middle. You wanna rub all the way to the edges. And if you have too much paint on your, on your plate, what is gonna happen is it's gonna gush out or maybe it's gone over the edges and you're gonna pick it up on your brayer. So if you notice that happening, grab a baby wipe and you can clean that up, unless you don't mind it. Like over, you can see over here, I got a little bit of paint that glopped and I also had some paint that glopped underneath and I didn't mind that at all, I actually liked it. But now when you lift this, you wanna, li you wanna lift it smoothly and cleanly. And I like to work from the top to the bottom. So I'll try to get my finger under one of the corners and I'll gently peel and lift with an even sort of uh, pressure or motion. And there you go, we have a print right there. Isn't it beautiful? So you can take a look at this and you can decide. You, you use your print as a learning opportunity. And I can see that I did not put enough paint here, which would be this little crevice area here. And I also kind of missed some on that upper edge. So let's bring my barrier sheet back and let's have another go. Let's print this plate again. The other thing that I wanna do the second time is I wanna use multiple colors. I really like this yellow but I'm gonna mix it up, give it a little bit more yellow. So I'm gonna pop, we'll put a separate petal of it over here. Ooh, come on. Pop a little bit of this Indian yellow and let's see what happens when we mix them together. So I'm just mixing with my brush, picking up some Indian yellow gently on both sides of it and coming over here and mixing it in, picking it up with this brighter yellow, and now I'm gonna come over here. I did not mix it very much because I want that mixing to happen over here on the plate. Do you see how pretty that is? I can pick up more yellow. I think I actually need more yellow. It's, I think it's really beautiful when the blending happens right on the printing plate as opposed to it being a nice, even coat. Let's put a little bit more yellow here. 
I'm trying, I'm putting way too much paint on here. I can feel it. Um, and I may end up with some squish happening, but let's see. So we have really great modeling of color on here. I wanna flip it over relatively quickly because I don't want it to start drying. I'm gonna align it right next to the previous one. I can see that I, well, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm probably gonna pick that orange paint up, but I don't care. Let's apply our pressure. see what we got here. I'm working from the bottom corner this time and pulling it up slowly and evenly. Oh, that's really beautiful. Now I did have too much, so much paint that I didn't get that inner stem area, but I really love the echo of the flower lines. And if I were to continue to print with this, I could use a baby wipe and sort of clean out those reservoirs where I want my lines to be. Clean that right off. And uh, should we try a green and a blue one? This, I know a little bit of this green goes a really long way. I want to encourage you too to think about not just the you know the expected color of whatever it is that you're printing like of course yellow would be my go-to here because these flowers are indeed yellow but play with some unexpected color either as a combination on your plate or just as a um, surprise element. And don't feel like you actually have to literally color your stems, you know, put the, the actual local color of the object around the stems or the blooms itself either. Really use this as an opportunity to experiment and also play with your orientation. So I'm gonna flip this one, I'm gonna invert it and I'm gonna line it directly above this one right here. So while it, it's, it's uh, expected or literal that a flower would be growing up from the bottom of the page to the top, play with that orientation. You may find or discover some really exciting ways to rethink everyday objects. Let's lift this up. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. Look at that. All right, we'll do one, one more. I'm gonna clean this out a tiny bit. It looks like this one needs to be cleaned out a little bit, right? And let's go with some blue if we can. Is this blue gonna open? I have not washed my brush once during this process which means that I have a really great sort of combination of color possibilities happening here. If I were painting, I would say that, that the act of not washing my brush is ensuring color harmony. Now I've got really dark colors on my brush and they're kind of all swallowing up this yellow. So let's bring a little bit more yellow back in. Okay, got a lot of paint on this one. Probably won't get super delicate, completely accurate line work based on the plate itself, but I will. I may get end up with super exciting, incredible color swooshing around which feels like it's a nice compromise. And really what we are doing in our books is playing and exploring. We are not, I'm not ever going to take anything in my book and hang it on a 
you know, hang it on a wall or frame it. But what I will do is learn my process through this uh, experimentation. I will learn ways that I could then take this process and perhaps do something a little bit more literal in a later painting or a different sort of piece. So when you are done, you're gonna to wanna to grab a baby wipe or take your printing plate to a sink. Wipe it gently with something that is soft and non-abrasive because again, those scratches means that you are going to uh, be creating more line work with your drawing. And actually it might be interesting to take like a piece of steel wool to one of these and uh, really explore that line work that would happen as a result of it. That might be something super exciting. Another thing that I like to do is to date my page. So don't forget to date your page when you are done. Maybe even add a little bit of text to the page about the, you know, your inspiration and what it means to you. You could also throw some notes down here on, you know, the process related to each individual print so that you have a permanent record of what you did, if you would like. Uh, and, and remember, this page or this page or any other page inside your book is never really completely finished. I could choose to come back to this page at a later date and add another layer of marks to it uh, and, and just continue to build upon the the different experiences that make up my own life inside the journal that is my art journal. All right. So I hope everybody has a little mechanism here from today's demo to record the onset of spring or perhaps fall if you are in the Southern Hemisphere. Feel free to expand this idea to represent anything that's important to you. You can choose a flower for its symbolic content. There are some great flower dictionaries out there that tell you about the history of flowers and what their meanings were in to prior generations of humans. You could also choose to use actual objects from your everyday life, whether it's a paintbrush or a cherished paperweight or tchotchke or some sort of memento that you really value. But Make the, take this lesson and make it your own is what I'm trying to say. And I can't wait to see what you make. If you do uh, follow this journaling exercise, please, and, and share it on social media, please tag it with Art So Journaling. And uh, that way I can follow up and see what it is you've been creating. Thank you so much for journaling with me. And I will be back next month with another art journaling lesson. Happy creating. Here's a quick peek at the demo page that I did earlier for this lesson and the different plates that were all created from the same foam material, just cut into different sizes. So you can see the larger plate that made up the blue squares at the top of the page, the square plate that made up the greener, yellower, smaller shapes in the middle of the page, and the longer, narrower plate that I used at the bottom of the page. And I also want to encourage you to think about the color you use on your prints in other unconventional ways. So beyond thinking about arbitrary color or color associated with whatever it is that you drew onto your plates, think about the assemblage of the prints on a page as something else altogether. So here I was thinking a little bit about landscape and I wanted some foreground, midground and sky and I used the colors to exemplify or hint at that kind of a structure. So feel free to get as creative as you wish with your combination of plates and colors and symbol of spring. But most of all, have fun.